Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Now and then I've looked at those cool glass dip pens. You know, the ones that look like they've been hand blown and pulled as hot glass and have a cool twisty uh, tip and glass colors. They look like they'd be an interesting writing experience, but I've always balked at buying one because I'm no calligrapher or artist sketcher and I'd look silly with a long glass quill in my hand. Then I saw this sale on Etsy for a Delight convertible glass dip fountain pen. It's a pocket pen in the form and style of a Pen BBS 471. So, compact and convertible and reasonably priced. Cha-ching! Sale! I've never used a glass dip pen before, so if you're interested in seeing whether I'm a glass dip artist, or a total messy failure, or just a dip, find out right now. <laughs> So it never rains, but it pours, apparently. This is the third day in a row I've received a package from China. Uh, all of them weeks and weeks in transit. So let's see what this one is today. I think I know what this one is. Acquiring Minds want to know. Another pack full of bubbles. Well, I've seen this box before. Uh, my Delight New Moon came in this box. Almost identical to it. But this is something a little bit different. Looks like we've got a bunch of cellophane here. And we have a converter and a nib. My Rupin stationary. Extra fine. Oh, look, it's a Fude mini food day but that's not what's interesting about this this is a glass pen there we are so i've never had one of these before two for one i thought that was really cool your pocket glass dip pen and we will do a review and see what my glass tip prowess is or isn't as the case may be. On Saturday morning, I'll be posting a review of what I'm calling a beta version of a new model of fountain pen from Long at PenBBS. This is the PenBBS 100, and it is PenBBS's first 14 karat gold nib. The pen is a close copy of the Hero 100, which has a storied history in China and is itself a version of the classic Parker 51. I have a gold nibbed 1950s Parker 51 with which to compare the Pen BBS 100 with. And it should be an interesting watch for you inquiring minds. So that's this Saturday. Same pen time, same pen channel. Same back time, same back channel. Now on to the delight. I'm really kind of anxious to see how the glass nib works on paper. But first, let's take a closer look at this pen. Delike is a brand that I'm familiar with. I reviewed the Delike New Moon 3 last year. I put a Delike nib into a Jinhao 51A and actually have a new version of the Delike New Moon on the way to me in a lovely rose-colored resin. As I showed in the unboxing, it comes with a glass dip nib and a number five size fountain pen and converter. When I ordered this pen, I did not own a Pen BBS 471 with which to compare, as it is definitely in that style. But in the intervening time, I've ordered and received a Pen BBS 471 in this lovely acrylic called Starry Night with gold trim. This pen was picked out by my wife and she can't wait to get her hands on it, so I have to review it real soon. So watch for that too. The Delight here is a little thinner and a little longer when capped uh, than the 471 is. The acrylic here is very pleasant to look at and very chatoyant as well, but it feels light and soft compared to other acrylics like you find on Moon Man and Pen BBS. This is also a very light pen. There's no clip, of course, 
and it is completely cylindrical in shape. The cap finial is domed. There's no separation between the cap and barrel at all that can be felt and it can only be seen because of the change in the acrylic here and because of the see-through threads on the end of the section. The bottom finial is threaded to serve as the posting mechanism. The cap comes off with one, two turns to reveal a small tapered section with a small flare just before the number five size steel nib. And that section, of course, is the same acrylic material, which is very nice. The nib has a laser etched logo, which is a total enigma for me. I have no idea what it is. It bears no resemblance to anything close to Delike. I can only assume they've outsourced their nibs for this pen. Under the weird logo, it says Meru Pen Stationery, laser etched with EF which is extra fine, which is this nib. As I mentioned in the unboxing, that is a slightly upturned Mini Fude EF nib. Very interesting. So the section unscrews from the barrel to reveal a standard international converter. That's the size there. It has a little agitator in it, but this is one of those slide push-pull kind of converters and it takes a bit less than a standard international cartridge which you can put in the pen just like that just one two won't fit so that's a good thing and i would recommend using a refillable standard international cartridge over this little guy because that's not a lot of ink at all. The cap screws on the end of the barrel to post and the pen is, in my opinion, not usable in its unposted format uh, because it's a little bit too short, just a little bit too short. So you'll want to post this pen and it's designed to post. The threads on this are a little bit chunky and sometimes difficult to find to uh, screw that on to the end it sort of rolls around like that on you but i find if you back turn it until you hear a click you get there's that click and you get one of the threads going and then it goes fine once the cap is posted and the pen is in a usable length it feels pretty good in the hand the section is a bit small, but this is a pocket pen, so I won't be using it to write my version of War and Peace, that's for sure. <laughs> the pen is very light in the hand. This step up to the barrel right here is actually very sharp because of the division between the cap and the barrel when it is closed. You want that to be absolutely flush, and it is but it means those edges can't be eased off. Otherwise you'd have a divot there, but you can actually feel that on your thumb. Uh, I'm able to adjust my grip so that my thumb doesn't rest on it. So uh, it's not a problem for me. Of course, your mileage may vary. Now let's look at some size comparisons. So here is the Delike Glass Dip Convertible Pen with a Pen BBS 471, a Pilot E95S, a Kaweco Sport, and a Lamy Safari for scale. You are very tall. Now let's look at them posted. Here are the five pens posted, and the top four pens are what you consider pocket pens, uh, whereas the Lamy Safari is a full-sized fountain pen. But uh, the smallest of the group is, of course, the Kaweco Sport. Uh, the E95S from Pilot is the only gold nib in the group and the 471 from Pen BBS is the only number six size nib in the group. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample.
and we're back with the writing sample portion of the review. Before I do the normal writing sample, I'm going to cut in this short video I shot the first time I used the glass dip nib. As you'll see, I used it to sample some ink colors on some watercolor paper. Then I'll be back with some writing samples with both nibs on this Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. So here we are with the Delike uh, glass dip pen and I've never tried this before so I thought I'd get out some watercolor paper. This is uh, like heavy cardstock with a bit of a texture to it and I've got some interesting ink samples here uh, from my pen friend Janice. I think this pen might end up being the perfect uh, ink sample uh, tester um, to put on cards and so forth so I'm going to give it a try on this uh, this watercolor paper and she's giving me some Sailor Subuku and Monteverdi Scotch Brown a J. Arvin 1670 stormy gray which I've already used is a shimmering ink and this uh, Dimene cocoa shimmer which is also a shimmering ink as you can see I'm going to shake these up but uh, we'll give my dipping a try here on camera the first time dangerous Doug they call me Danger's my middle name. And of course you can also, as we see in the review, uh, convert this into a fountain pen. But I think the more interesting thing is going to be this glass dip. Let's give it a try. Never done this before. First time. Dip, 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 dip. So this is Sailor Subuku. in color of course it's very toothy oh yeah, yeah, yeah. uh I'm sorry which you'd expect and the paper is very textured clean that off well, that's nice that uh, actually clean, cleans up very nicely so I've been typically using my calligraphy pen for my ink samples my swatches in this 1.5 stub but of course the, the problem is when you dip that you have to clean it every single time and it, with the feed on it it uh, ends up being a little bit more work than you want Let's give the Monteverdi. It's not shimmering ink, so I don't need to shake it. I love these little glass bottles. Dip, 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 dip. This is Monteverdi Scotch Brown. That's a lovely shading brown. Very nice. It's not unpleasant actually on this uh, watercolor paper, even though you can hear that scratch and everything, but it's really not what I would consider scratchy. It doesn't catch. Dip, 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 dip. Let's see what Mr. J. Urbain has to say. J. R. B. 1670. 
Tommy Gray. This is a lovely shimmering gray. I've already used some of this in another pen. It does have particulate in it. So uh, the pen I put it in you know, it probably wasn't the best choice. I kind of clogged it up a bit. This is a lot faster and a lot easier to ink my samples with this pen rather than the calligraphy pen. I'm already discovering within the first couple of minutes here. It's another shimmering ink. This is Dimene Coco Shimmer. Dip, 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 dip. Dimene. Cocoa Shimmer Guess you get uh, used to it after a while of how much you can write and it cleans up so beautifully I like it I like it I like it a lot inquiring minds wanted to know and I think this pen is going to be used a lot by yours truly in this configuration And we're back, and this is the Delike. Glass dip. I'm calling it a convertible. Thunderbird. And this pen has an extra fine steel nib. And the ink I've chosen for this pen is Dimine Coco Shimmer. And here is the test card swatch for Dimine Coco Shimmer with J. Urbain Caroube de Chypre and Mont Blanc Toffee Brown. So this nib is a very fine line and it has a good amount of feedback. You might be able to hear that on the paper, but that's not unusual for an extra fine nib. In fact, I'm very impressed with this extra fine nib uh, in that it writes fairly smoothly uh, considering how fine it is. I've checked the uh, tines on it, very well aligned. Let's check the wetness. It's not exceedingly wet at all. Of course, that could be opened up to write a little bit better but uh, it's an extra fine so it's not going to have a lot of flow to it anyway that's the line variation again very stiff steel nib no line variation I can get out of it and to our writing sample
Of course, Galileo died in 1642, so what did he know? And some reverse writing. Nope. We're not going to get any reverse writing out of this nib. And some quick writing. Seems to be keeping up okay, but it's not very wet at all. Now let's do the same with the glass nib. And we'll use the same ink. So here is the Delike glass dip nib with the same ink. And as to wetness, ooh, that's very wet now. What a surprise. Let's do another quote. And there we go. Let's see how fast it writes. It writes fast, but it runs out of ink very fast as well. And that's pretty typical, I would think. Those glass dip aficionados among you will be nodding in agreement when you see how this behaves, I'm sure. So, What do I like? And what do I not like about this fountain pen? Glass pen. Well, let's begin with the fountain pen part of the equation. I can sum up my feelings in a one word on the fountain pen. And that word is nope. I should elaborate a little, I suppose. Uh, the nib is very small and thin, and it is a, an extra fine, which I'm not that fond of, uh, but it does write smooth for an extra fine. The converter is very, very small. It is the standard international mouth on there, which will allow you to use a standard international cartridge with this pen. Actually, that would be better because uh, the standard international cartridge takes more ink than this little guy does. And this is uh, one of those push-pull uh, converters, which doesn't allow you to really control the, the ink without squirting it all over the place. So I just don't see me reaching for this fountain pen um, with this nib on it to write with uh, for any kind of writing. My Kaweco Sport has a very small nib and almost the same capacity converter, but it has a clip, is very portable, and feels more like a real fountain pen in the hand. So no, I won't be writing with this configuration at all. However, with the glass dip nib, I think I've actually now replaced my calligraphy pen as an instrument I'll use to do my ink sample swatches from now on. As you saw the first time I used it on the watercolor paper, uh, the switching between the inks is almost seamless. Very little cleanup is required and no cross-contamination of the inks, which is great. Of course, those are my needs. You might have other requirements of a glass dip pen. Let me know in the comments what you use your glass dip pen for and in what situations this little delight might be useful for you. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. Dip, 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 dip. Dip, 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 dip. Matters stateside have taken a tragic turn as this year's gourd crop has fallen prey to a rather unexpected infestation of salt marsh cutworms. Dip, 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 dip. Peter, it's four in the morning. Come to bed. Marital concerns continue to bedevil me.
And that's all she wrote. I made this. 